James, as an owner of the club, what does it mean to be able to honour Dan Carlson in this way? Oh, I think it's uh, it's amazing to be able to celebrate the success that Dan's had here over the years and the contribution he's made to the club. You know, Dan played here in a period where we, you know, we were pretty dominant in the elite league, and he was the heartbeat of that. And to be able to, you know, bring him and his family over and celebrate an evening and have his shirt in the rafters means everything, you know, for us to a club. That's who we are. Dan Carson was a player for the Blaze before my time. I've seen him on video a little bit. Tell me about him as a player, from your point of view as a player. What was it like to be on the ice with him? Ah, oh, DC was, an, you know, he was an amazing player. You know. Um, DC left everything on the ice every night. I think the one thing that uh, separated DC, you know, from other players is, you know, from his first game he played for this club, you know, he put, you know, he left everything on the ice and he battled and he worked hard and he's an incredibly talented player. To the last game he played here, you know, there's not many players who can, you know, deliver that consistency in the way they play and their approach as a leader, you know, on the ice and off the ice like DC did. You know, I think if any any young players out there want to be, you know, good hockey players, he is an unbelievable role model. Paul Thompson said earlier in the week that he was the go-to man, uh, the player that players are, you know, look to, to 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 ignite the team. As a player, would you look to always looking to see where he is to, to get the puck to him? Oh, 100%, you know, the, the the beauty with DC is whether he, he, you know, he was leading the rush, making a play, or he was battling in the corner. You know, he, DC could play all over the ice, which was, you know, when you're in a game and you need someone to get us going, that's what DC did. You know, he was the heartbeat. He was, you know, his engine's unbelievable. He would just go and go and go and go and go. And you could see other teams, you know, they don't want to battle against him. Everybody I've spoken to in the last couple of weeks about Dan, um, always mentions Alan Calder's name. It just seems that the, the two of them go hand in hand, and we have messages on social media, and I think every other one puts Adam Calder's name with Dan as well. What were they like as a pair? It's just a great combination, you know, on the ice. It's just unbelievable how them two kind of matched up and uh, fed off each other. You know, Calder's that guy who could put the puck in the net, unbelievable sniper, and DC was that guy, you know work right up and down getting calls to puck you know battling for pucks in the corner it just worked it just clicked and uh, you know both pretty quiet guys off the ice as well but on the ice it just came on you know came to life T tell me a little bit about, about that about about the quietness because i keep hearing it and i heard it about adam as well uh, i've spoken to adam so i know i know what it's like um is, is it a, is it a myth or were they both so quiet you know hardly spoke to each other but on the ice they were they were yeah. like brothers yeah, I mean, they were both pretty quiet off the ice, you know, DC, he didn't, he didn't hear DC say much, you know, he'd mumble the odd thing every now and again, you know, the same as Colds, Colds a quiet guy and you just see him chuckling sometimes when, <laughs> when we'd be taking a mick out of someone, but uh, both quiet guys, but you know what, they did, their, they did their leading on the ice and I think, um, I think that says a lot about them as individuals.